This is a great thought experiment. I heard this once, and it, it's kind of funny, and uh, I enjoy it. So who do you get in a car with? Okay, so you're walking down the sidewalk. I walked over to Walmart the other day, and I got groceries. I'm walking down. Someone in a car, hopefully a nice car, rolls up to you. You know, the tinted glass comes down, and you hear, hey, hop in. Okay, well, this could be really good or really bad. So who do we get in with? What do you guys think? Do you guys think you get in with an acquaintance? You've met them maybe once or twice. You've heard of their name around. Are you guys going to get in with them? No? No? Okay. I said probably not, and it'd feel kind of creepy. It'd feel kind of creepy. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know. How about a complete stranger? No. And call 911 while you're running away, right? They roll up. They're like, get in. No. <laughs> Family, you guys going to get in with family? Let me tell you what, we're going to talk maybe more about this later too, but I'm not particularly close with my family, and this is my family. And if this is my family and you ask me to take an action, good chance I'll get in, if you're my family, right? Yes, I'm going to get in with my family. That guy you've always known, you've known him since you were like seven, since you were in high school, and you only hear from him when he needs something. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, everybody's nodding their heads, yes. We know a guy like that. When he rolls up and he's like, oh, hey, Brett, hop in. You're like, I don't know. I feel like the last time I heard from you, you wanted me to help reorganize your garage. It's like, did you need something? It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm moving. No, I'm not getting in. <laughs> huh. I just found out. I just found out. I think my wife's having a baby. I got to go. I got to go. I got an excuse. Good friends. Yes, you're going to get in a car with a good friend. And this is what I want you to consider. You, as a marketer, you are driving the car. You are the one rolling up to them, and you're saying, do this. You hop in. Who do they see you as? That is critically important. Because if you, let's see. If we're asking strangers who have never been in this church before, they walk in, they hit the connect, and we're asking them for 30 pieces of information, you're a stranger, and you're walking up to them, and you're saying, hey, give me all your personal information. And it's, ah, uh, no, thank you. No, and I'm probably not going to come back because I'm really creeped out. First-time guests, right? What do they think of us? What do, who do they think we are when we drive up and we ask them to do something? People just finishing encounter. I think that's a really, really impactful time. Really great things have happened. It's also a very vulnerable time, especially for people who just came to Christ. So they've made a big commitment what are we doing with that? Are we treating it like family, someone we deeply care about? Or do we just turn around and say, great, we're laying some concrete. You should join us. You know, we've got something for you to do. That's a, that can be a confusing thing because, because I thought you guys just cared about me for who I am. And, and as soon as I really reveal myself to you and, and commit, the first thing you do is ask something. I don't know. There's a, there's a question there. Who do they see us as? That's very important. And then those attending a Bible study, who do they see us as? Am I interested in their well-being? Am I a family? Am I a friend first? Or am I a stranger? You know, am I, there's no connection. It's just information. Who do they see me as? And then committed volunteers. Again, this is really important. If committed volunteers feel that we only ask things of them, like that can be a dangerous place to be. And we're going to talk um, about that guy. This is the number one most, I don't know what to say, like uh, problem that happens in marketing is you're that guy and you only show up when you need something, okay? And in the early days of marketing, we would have websites going up. People would say, sign up right now and then click submit for you know, your download. And people would go, yeah, oh, I'd love to. As much information as you want. This is going to be great. And you know what we got? when we signed up for those, a bunch of junk. We got a bunch of junk. And, and I have done this on email lists to people. And I, I had an email list of 3,000 people with ClickMill when I first started getting started. And I would email people, and they would run away. They would report it as spam, and they would unsubscribe. And it baffled me. Why do people not want to be around me? Oh, maybe because every time I talk to them, I'm just asking for things. I'm not investing in them. They don't think I care about them. I'm just sort of using offers and things to get them to do what I want. And that's, uh, so, so with that, as the internet has progressed, as industry has progressed, people have lost trust in anyone offering to meet a need. 
because why are you meeting that? What's, what's your real agenda? So successful marketers, 100% agenda is to meet needs and care about people. They put the goal in place. At some point, the desired action, that call to action comes up, but it is not the focus once it's worked into the plan. The focus is helping people, just like we did with the Easter drive-in service. You helped people, and it was hugely successful, at least to my understanding. That was the, that was the, that was the main goal. So if you only show up when you need something, you are guaranteed to have your audience check out. It's just a matter of how much time. Just a matter of how much time. Skilled marketers give, and that's all they focus on. They put the call to action into the plan, and then they just focus on meeting deeply felt needs. And that's great, because that means, at least how we usually think about marketing, you don't have to do marketing. You just get to help people, which is what you're in ministry for. So skilled marketers give. Unskilled marketers make requests. We don't want to be that guy who drives up and just makes requests. So we talked about email list. Um, another example here, uh, last week I was, no joke, I was speaking with a Nigerian princess who came through my marketing funnel with ClickMill, a, a new client, praise God. And uh, so firstly, her ministry, she goes to Nigeria and she teaches pe children about AIDS because there's a, still a huge epidemic and they don't have the education to know how that happens. So she educates them there. She also helps teach them how to grow food so they are not enticed by trafficking traders, slave traders, getting them children into trading. They say, we'll give you food, come on in. The lead magnet, a really evil one. And, uh, and also local warlords. They will recruit child soldiers and promise food. And so she, this is her ministry. And she told me, she said, I do all this marketing. I do all this marketing to raise money. And I, I said, well, what are you doing? It sounds like you're really putting in a lot of effort and it sounds, doesn't sound like you're getting a lot of results. She says, I'm always in these Facebook groups, these nonprofit Facebook groups, and it's just a really simple request. If each of you could just give $1, these kids in Nigeria would not be in trafficking. They would not have AIDS and all of these things. And I told her, I said, I'll bet you got kicked out of that group, didn't you? And she said, all of them. Like, how did you know? I get kicked out of all of them because... You're making a request. And to people who see that request, a request is spam. When people make requests of you, when you signed up for an email list and they send you an email asking you for something, what do you do? You delete it. You mark it as spam. You unsubscribe. And that's a lot of times what churches can do is we ask, we make requests. And unskilled marketers make requests. Skilled marketers make a plan to have a, a call to action and then they 100% focus on meeting needs, and they only ask when that need has been fully met. So when do we make requests? We give our call to action when we give two to four times what we're asking for. Two to four times. Okay, so we've got strangers, first time attenders, Bible studies, so we, we wanna think about what are we giving especially to volunteers, because they do a lot. And I think a lot of times there's sort of a, a, a money versus value here. Well, if we're asking them to tithe, what could I possibly give them worth more than 10% of their income? A whole bunch of stuff. A whole, and this is, I told you we'd get here. A whole bunch of stuff. Pastor Andrew and I were having a conversation, and he said, what can I give to my leaders, my volunteers, that is worth more than the effort they are putting in, because they are putting in a lot of effort. And I'll give you an example for me. Right? I'm not, I grew up in a pretty toxic home environment, and unfortunately I'm not terribly close to my family. I'm not in my hometown. That's 6,000 miles away. This church is my family. You know, Metro it's not even a church family. It is, it has to be my family. And, excuse me, if I show up to a group of leaders and those leaders are my family, I will do whatever you want. Fair? And that's the same with every person, every leader you have contact with. What can you give them? You can give them family. You can give them love. You can meet needs. 
And it doesn't matter what you ask for on the back end. So long as you're in their corner first, they will do whatever you ask. them, And that is how you reach people. So we, wanna, we want to always give two to four times the value. So question four, how can you give more value? Yes, sir. audiences. So the three motivators I go by is there's external, there's internal, and there's eternal. And so for the little kids, they're motivated by external gifts. You know, side, they can get a bike, they'll come to Easter egg hunt or get the prize, the golden egg. Um, but for me, as a, an adult, that, that doesn't motivate me, right? So then there's internal, Self-development, how do I get ahead, success, you know, promotion, and so self-development. But then, but to me, there are people who um, have already made it in life, and they're motivated by eternal. And so even if I offered them, hey, come to church, get this, that's, that's not, even giving, um, for them giving is more of an eternal uh, motivator, because, because there's nothing on this earth that really they want anymore except they want their eternal rewards and so I, I that's how I kind of uh, sort of uh, judge my audience Absolutely. yeah I think that's I think that's really fantastic and I think you also see that a lot in scripture too because you, even in psychology there are basic needs and there are more sophisticated needs and if I'm hungry I don't really care what you have to say about anything because I'm thinking about the sandwiches in the back of the room and so yeah when people don't have material needs met, what do they focus on? Material needs. When they then have the material needs, what do they focus on? The emotional needs, the healing that needs to happen. That's a need we can meet. And only after all of those things, oftentimes, those things are met, are they interested in the spiritual need. And that's exactly what we were talking about at the beginning when Jesus meets the, the physical needs first and then transitions to the spiritual need. He's built the trust. He's taken care of the most important things that are distracting them, and then he brings their attention to a bigger, deeper need that they're not as in touch with. So yes, I, I absolutely agree. Um, question four here, how can you give more value to your audience without increasing your workload? Okay, so what we're saying is, like let's just say with volunteers, they give a lot. How do I give more to them? I would have to work 24 hours a day, eight days a week to give that much. They give a ton. And Digital marketers, this is something that was a very difficult question for me to answer. I've got to be on Google. I've got to be on YouTube. I'm on course websites. I'm here. How do I possibly create enough content to meet people's needs in all of these places? And the answer is you recycle it. You recycle it. You have tons and tons of good information. You already meet needs very well. Take the stuff you're already doing and just reformat the same thing. This information is based on three courses that I already have sitting online. And I just repurposed it, I just put it in a slideshow. I know it meets your need effectively, and so I'm going to give it to you in a different format. It saves a large amount of time. I'm not going to create something new every time I have a different, you know, specific um, person I'm trying to meet their needs. So one way we can do that. Don't stop now. We have tons of other videos for you to watch and learn how to reach more people more effectively. If you loved this video and you don't want to miss out on what we have coming up for you next, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to keep up to date on our newest content. If you'd like to work with ClickMill personally, head on over to clickmill.co where you can learn more about our proven marketing strategies. I look forward to seeing you in the very next video.